four A. Six four A. Okay. Um, we've kind of learned some of this already. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus, which we've actually already have done. But they kind of want to reinforce some stuff. Shh. Fundamental theorem of calculus. All right. So go ahead and write that down. Um, there's actually two parts to this theorem, and we're going to do both parts today. So um, it says here <laughs> that... The section presents, by discovery of Newton and Leibniz, the astonishing connection between integration and differentiation. It started uh, the mathematical development that fueled the scientific revolution for the next 200 years. And it is still regarded as the most important computational discovery in the history of mathematics. Uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus. Computational, not proof. So there's like computational stuff, like figuring stuff out with numbers, and there's proof and theory. So it's not a proof. Okay, here, this is what it says. Here it is, part A. Okay, shh, two parts. So here's part one of FTC. Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, FTC, okay? Uh, here it is, it says, if <coughs> F, is continuous. If F is continuous. See, continuity is a very important thing in calculus. If it's not continuous, things get messed up. All right. If F is continuous on an interval from A to B, then, then capital F of X is equal to the integral from A to X, F of T, oops, F of T, DT. We did, but this is gonna be kind of different though. This is kind of um, enforcing it. All right, then this has, has a derivative at every point This is just part one. At every point in AB, it's an A, sorry, AB, and here comes the, uh, the big part, and the derivative of capital F dx is equal to the derivative of dx, the integral, from a to x of f of t dt is equal to little f of x. <laughs> there it is. Right? OK. Uh, that's not a proof. Actually, there is a proof in the book of it. I was looking at it this morning, and I decided, nope. Nope. <laughs> not at all. We're not going to do the proof. No. OK. This is what it says. I know. This is a whole bunch of mumbo-jumbo. It's like when I was in my stats class and my teacher wrote symbol, 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 symbol. I didn't know what any of it was. Okay. This is what it says here. It says. It says three things in this theorem. In this, okay, fundamental theorem. It says, number one, every continuous function is the derivative of some other function. Okay? And then it also says, every continuous function has an antiderivative. And integration and differentiation are inverse functions of one another. They're inverses of one another. They, out, they undo each other, like square root and square, derivatives and integrals, inverses. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to do some problems. Number one, and we are going to find the derivatives of integrals. Two parts today. All right, we're going to find the derivative of integrals. Now, take a look at this. This right here is the most important part of it all, okay? Now, let's, let's recognize some stuff, because we wrote a bunch of stuff down. We're not sure what it is. When you take the derivative of this integral, you just get f of x, okay? It's like taking the square root of a squared. It's, it's like they undo each other. But you're going from a to x 
of some function of t, and it ends up being f of x. Okay? So I'm going to show you a real problem, something that we're going to do. We are going to do uh, d dx of the integral from negative pi to x of the cosine of t dt. Okay, that's our job. We have to find out what this is equal to. All right, now the cool thing is whenever you have a constant at the bottom of your integral to x, exactly x, we can use this exact formula. It's just cosine of x, yep. So that's going to be the answer. The answer is f of t changes to f of x, basically. Okay? And this one works. It's perfect. And so your answer is cosine x. Okay? So the derivative of the integral, they cancel each other out, leaving you with cosine x. But it's the integral of x. Okay? I know it's of t dt, but don't worry about that. All right. Let's try another one. Number two. Uh, d dx the integral from 0 to x of 1 over 1 plus t squared dt. Okay, one more easy one before we get to the hard ones. Yeah. And it's just what you think it's going to be. The derivative integral cancel each other out. It's, it's in terms of x, so you write 1 over 1 plus x squared. All right, so Trevor's like, let's do some hard ones. Okay, Trevor, here we go. Um, number three. Stop saying that, Trevor. Number three. Hi, Jack. I forgot all about you. How are you? Oh my gosh. I didn't. I forgot that you that you go here. Okay. Um, how about this one? Let's find d dx, the integral, x to five of three t sine t dt. Okay, so Sophia realized that x is on the bottom and 5 is up top, but they need to be switched. And she remembered the property before break that says that you just do the opposite, right? If you take an integral, so we could write uh, d dx, or this is equal to d dx of the opposite. Where should I put that negative? Way out front then? In front of the integral. Yeah, in front of the integral negative integral from 5 to x of 3t sine t dt. So if we switch it from a to b goes to b to a, it's just going to be the opposite of that. And so then we get our answer would be negative 3x sine x. Okay? Just makes it opposite. All right. You probably don't need another one of those. No. Bless you. Now, you're probably wondering, is it always going to be x? No, it's not. So here we go. Number four. Yeah. Oh, see how this right here is from x to 5? But my fundamental theorem of calculus says from 5 to x. So if I switch those, it makes your integral negative. There was a property that we learned before break. That was if you have a to b of f of x dx. Yeah. Oops. Because it has to be on the integral from a constant to x, not at x. Right. Yeah. That was your question. Thank you, ladies. Okay. Takes a village. All right, number four. Chain rule now. Chain rule. Here we go. No, chain rule is the best. We are going to find the derivative. So they might ask you to do this. I'm in a different color now. All right, find dy dx and y is equal to the integral from 1 to x squared of cosine of t dt. Okay, we did one or we did a number to x and that was just cosine x, right? But this is to x squared. So there's going to be a little bit of a problem. So here's what they want you to do. You're going to let u equal x squared. 
They like to do this using substitution, okay? And then what you have is y is equal to 1 to u cosine of t dt. But the problem is, is that we're going to take the derivative of y with respect to x, but now it's in terms of u instead of x, okay? So then you have to do chain rule. So let me show you what they mean by that. When you do dy dx, okay, it's equal to dy du times du dx. This is kind of the fancy way of showing you how it works because look at, isn't dy dx just the same thing because those would reduce each other out? Okay, so this is what you want to do. And it's just chain rule, okay? It's just simply chain rule. So if you will take the derivative of this thing with respect to x, then this is what you do. You do, um, the derivative would then be cosine of u, cosine of u um, times du dx, which is 2x. And then you have to go and replace u. See what, see what u is over here? u is x squared. Well, what is du dx? The derivative of u with respect to x is 2x. Okay? So when you take the derivative of this, it's the derivative cosine of u times the derivative of u. It's like u prime. Oh. Yeah. It's like implicit differentiation, remember? So it's, it's really cosine of u times u prime. You like that better? Instead of all these du, dx's? Yeah, a lot of people like that better. So cosine of u, u prime. Okay? And u prime is 2x. All right, so now you just replace everything. So what was u? U was x squared. Mm -hmm. So this is cosine of x squared times 2x. Can we leave it like that? Yeah, you can leave it like that. They'll move it to the front. They'll write 2x cosine of x squared. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's try another one because those are tough. Those are really tough. Number five. All right, let's say that y is equal to the integral from 2 to 4x of the square root of 1 plus t squared over t dt. Okay, now some people will just go and they can just do it without letting u equal 4x, and that's fine. Okay. Um, I kind of like to do the substitution thing, just to see it. So let u equal 4x, and we're going to take the derivative of y equals 2 to u of the square root of 1 plus t squared over t dt. Okay? So the derivative of this would then be, with respect to u, Okay, u is going to get plugged in. So this would be the square root of 1 plus u squared over u times u prime. It's a chain rule. So times what? 4. Mm -hmm. And then you go back and you replace everything. So then this would be... No, no, because you're not taking the derivative of this. Because the integral and that, those just cancel each other out. The derivative and the integral, you don't change the function at all. You know what I mean? Like back here, this is still f of t. This is just f of x because this is x. So you really write it. So if you're going from, and you can write this down if you want to, if this might help you. If you're going, if you're taking the integral from a to u of f of t dt, it's really going to, and you're taking the derivative of this with respect to x, it's really going to be f of u times u prime. <coughs> That's really what it is. Okay? All right, so what was u? u is 4x. So this is going to be 1 plus, and you can write 4x in parentheses squared or write 16x squared, whatever you want to do, over u, which is 4x, times 4. 
And then what happens is, of course, those will reduce. Make sure you clean up all your messes. I can't tell you how many times I say that to my children. All right, 1 plus 16x squared over x. That's it. Okay? I kind of like this. I, you know, I've never, oh, I've never written this down right here, but I really like this right here. It's just f of u, u prime. That's all it is. Okay? Do you want to do one more? You want to try one? Yeah, 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 of course. No, no. Unless, unless u is like something that you have to take the product with. I don't think they do that to you. Yeah. Can you find a really hard one for you, Trevor? Sure. Ooh, like the square. No, I don't want to do that to you. That's just me. Okay, let's. Uh -huh. I'm going to put it on there now because you said that. All right, number six. Then do it. It's not on the test, don't do it. Oh. But if it is, then do it? Yeah. All right, let's do, oops, find the derivative of the integral from 3 to 2x squared of 5x plus 4 dt. All right, this is just kind of a okay one. You try this. It's not, it's not super hard. <clears throat> it's pretty basic. Okay, to just go straight there, you just did f of u, u prime. So this would be 10x squared plus 4 times 4x. And then, you know, you can clean that up. So I hope you got 40x cubed plus 16x. Who got that? Yes, good. Like a lot of them did. Okay. A lot of them did. I was telling the people on the video, they can't see all of yeah, your... You 40 kids' hands were raised on that one. <laughs> Two hands for everybody. All right. Uh, part B. Oh, wow. Last part. Where did what? Mm. Okay, so it's going to be f of u, u prime. <laughs> f of u would be to plug in 2x in for x. So then you get 10x squared. All right, are you ready for fundamental theorem of calculus part two? The funny thing is, so you've already learned it. I don't know why they do it again. It's weird. <laughs> no, because we forgot how to do this. All right. Here it is. So the first fundamental theorem of calculus says that integrals and derivatives can cancel each other out because they're inverses of each other. And then the second part is what you learned already, which is on an interval from a to b of f of x dx, this is going to equal, you learned this before I even got to teach it to you, f of b minus f of a. Where f of x or f of b, f of a, those are the antiderivative. Yeah. Antiderivatives. Okay. So back in the day when calculus was first invented and they had to, you know, find the area uh, under the curve and they needed to find the area of that. And they took Riemann sums, which were to add up all those rectangles. Remember that? We did that too. They didn't have fancy computers or calculators or anything. And they had to find the areas of all those and add up a whole bunch of them. They had nothing better to do. But then it came along that antiderivatives actually solve it. And so it was like super important at that time. It still is too. So number seven, you know how to do this, maybe. All right, it says evaluate the integral using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Whenever they say that, they just mean you're going to do antiderivatives. Okay? You don't need to draw a picture. You don't have to, you know, find the area or use RAM or anything like that. All right, so let's see if you guys remember how to do this. We'll go negative 1 to 3 of x cubed plus 1 dx. All right, we're going to evaluate this integral. It's a finite integral. It's on a finite interval from negative 1 to 3, and we're going to evaluate it. Okay, so are you ready? Do you remember how to do it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. X to the 4th. 
over four or one fourth. Do you like to do that or over yeah, four? Over like four. over four or one fourth, either way. And that, excuse me, and then the derivative of one is x. Antiderivative, thank you. And then we're gonna take this, and it should be plus c, but we don't need to worry about that. And we're gonna take this from negative one to three. Can we just do this? Yes, I know, and they do it again. It's weird. Sometimes this book does weird things. It's like we just did this in 6-3. In they just want you to do it again to make sure you know how to do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in 3. So it would be 3 to the 4th over 4 plus 3 minus, we'll plug in negative 1. So that would be just 1, 1 to the 4th over 4 minus 1. Okay? And then you get your calculator. Are you? Shoot. I don't have mine. Oh, there it is. All right, I got exactly 24. Now, by the way, here's the thing. We also know that our calculators can do this too, right? We can check our answer. Oh, you can't? Back in the day, you know, those guys, ooh. <laughs> I'm in thetas. I'm in polar mode. Will it do it in polar mode? Probably. D theta? Yeah, 24. Okay. All right, man, if Leibniz could come back now and he'd check, oh, he'd be so excited about that.